This use of play is brought to you by. This is how we roll. Oh, the offers are quite exciting, and the prices will leave you smiling. Everybody's got a chance to blow. Enjoy one month of free Flow TV when you sign up or upgrade to Flow Broadband this season. This is the Barbados Today Evening Update for Tuesday, December the 29th, 2015. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with an appeal for motorists and pedestrians to exercise greater care and attention as the country gets ready to ring in the new year. Public Relations Officer of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Richard Cox, made the plea against the backdrop of 22 deaths already recorded for 2015. There were 14 road fatalities recorded in 2014, and Cox makes it clear that the increase was too many. And he's urging Barbadians to drive safely on the roads as they make their way to and from upcoming Old Year's Night and New Year's Day celebrations. The Executive Director of the Barbados Employers Confederation, Tony Walcott, is calling for a meeting of the full social partnership to address the social and economic issues facing the country. In his end-of-year message, Walcott expressed disappointment that the partnership was only able to meet once this year, despite the proposed quarterly meetings under the chairmanship of Prime Minister Frundell Stewart. Subcommittee meetings, he said, were also significantly reduced for various reasons. The Confederation must, at this point, express the hope that the announced rationalization to take place across several statutory corporations are brought before a full social partnership meeting before any discussions are taken on the new structures to be put in place and consequent redundancies. The Confederation, however, restates its commitment to work in the context of the social partnership framework as we collectively seek to address the necessary restructuring of the country's economic model with a view to significantly reduce the cost to the government of Barbados while simultaneously growing the economy. In an assessment of the legislative environment, Walcott said while no new legislation was proclaimed during the year, there are still issues with the Employment Rights Act, which he said the Confederation hoped would be addressed next year. While it has been recognized that there are issues which have been identified by industrial relations practitioners and staff of the Labor Department, a promised convening of the social partners to discuss the identified issues and challenges is yet to happen. It is hoped that this will be addressed as a matter of urgency in 2016. Family physician Dr. Colin Alert is questioning recent figures quoted by Chief Executive Officer of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Dr. Dexter James, on heart attacks and strokes in the country. In an update on the growing prevalence of non-communicable diseases, Dr. James revealed that Barbados records more than 40 strokes and nearly 12 heart attacks per day. Dr. James made the disclosure recently as he received a $25,000 check from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados for ventilators and cardiac monitors. Many of our needs really built around life-saving equipment, physical analysis, anesthesia machines, vital sign monitors, cardiac monitors, ventilators, all directly linked to the current pathology that we now see in Barbados. We may or may not know today in Barbados we have in excess of 40 strokes per day and almost 12 heart attacks per day. So that with, with, with that type of situation and an aging population, there's a, a very high demand now for critical care equipment. But in response, Dr. Alert said the figures seem exceptionally high. He pointed to a 2012-2013 report by the Barbados National Registry which showed the number of strokes at 1,277, which is an average of 53 strokes per month. Of these, an average of 18 people die each month. Similar figures for heart attacks average 31 per month, with 18 deaths each month. However, he says, while it is not impossible, it is extremely unlikely that the country has moved from 53 strokes per month, which translates to less than two strokes per day, to 40 strokes per day in two years. Police are still on the hunt for wanted man Jivad Tevon Griffith, 
the 21-year-old, who is also known as Runit of Harrison's Tenantry Road, Crab Hill, St. Lucie, is 5 feet 8 inches tall, slim built, and of dark complexion. He has black hair, medium eyes, and lips. He also has a tattoo depicting a star on his left hand, a tattoo depicting two skulls on his left forearm, and a tattoo of two teardrops under his left eye. Griffith is considered armed and dangerous, and the police say no one should approach him. Police are also reminding the public that it is a serious offence to harbour or assist wanted persons. Any person caught committing this offence can be prosecuted, said the police in a statement this afternoon. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of wanted man Jivad Tevon, a.k.a. Runit Griffith, is asked to contact the police emergency at telephone number 211 or the nearest police station. It was an evening of honoring of ancestors at the Israel Lovell Foundation as the organization joined with other groups to celebrate Ujima, the third day of Kwanzaa. Organizer of the event, Michael Slocum, explained that Ujima speaks to the collective work and responsibility to build and maintain the community. He said Ujima was chosen as a celebration out of the seven principles and seven days of Kwanzaa in order for Barbadians to reinforce this sense of community. We have uh, people from the Pan-African Commission, we have Israel Level Foundation, we have Hainesville Youth Group. So we all gathered here today to celebrate uh, one day of Kwanzaa. Hopefully next year we'll be able to do all seven days. Um, it's just a free evening this evening, uh, community, uh, young old uh, mixing, uh, drumming, dancing, singing and chanting. And we all brought uh, a dish to have. From a community standpoint, drum is center. It is the heartbeat of Africa is drumming. Uh, dance would be the blood that makes it flow. So anytime that you get a group of people together of African descent, I believe there should be some form of drumming. I think the drumming is the heartbeat of us. The, the sharing of the food, again, community, that is, everybody's bringing a dish so that the burden does not fall on one person. Everybody brings a dish out, everybody shares. In sports, West Indies captain Jason Holder expresses his pride in his team's fighting spirit during the just concluded second test. The regional side lost to Australia by 117 runs on the fourth day today. However, Holder says he is disappointed that his side was unable to mount up a better fight in the game, which cost them the series. In the post-match press conference, he lauded players Darren Bravo in the first innings and Danish Ramdin in the second innings. There's regional and international news after this short break. In the region, 19 people lost their lives in road accidents in Haiti over the Christmas holidays and over 100 more were injured. The motor vehicle accidents occurred between December 24th and 27th. The Deputy Director General of the National Ambulance Center, Dr. Garnel Michel, revealed that most of the 54 accidents were the result of speeding, driving while intoxicated, fatigue or lack of vigilance. And finally, a fresh storm threatens already drenched parts of the UK. Storm Frank is now due to sweep through this evening, affecting Cumbria and South and Central Scotland, which are most at risk. Four severe flood warnings are in effect for England and Wales, along with 47 flood warnings. An old stone bridge at Tadcaster, North Yorkshire, has collapsed with concerns that a nearby gas pipe has ruptured. More in this BBC report. To tell you that there had been fears about the bridge. In fact, it had been closed to traffic uh, and to pedestrians since the flooding 
on Boxing Day. Uh, however, during the day, it was clear that the bridge was uh, looking iffy, I think you could say. And then a short time ago, suddenly it collapsed on the eastern edge. And there are concerns, too, that that collapse may have severed a gas main. People certainly have been able to smell gas near the bridge. So for now, we've all been evacuated away from the area about uh, 100, uh, 150 metres up the uh, River uh, Bridge Street to the junction with Kirkgate. And now people here are gathered. Uh, the police are in attendance. And we're waiting to see uh, whether there is any uh, gas problems. That report from the BBC brings us to the end of our Barbados Today evening update. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.